So, my dear friends, we have gone through such a great experience of the holy kurbana, holy kurbana. And earlier, maybe you, we started activating the gift of healing. So what was our slogan? Jesus gave them, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, cast out demon. And incidentally, our theme of this retreat and the liturgy readings are going very much hand in hand. <laughs> We heard in Mark's Gospel that the calling of the apostles. So Mark's Gospel, Jesus, we already heard from the, from the preaching, he called them. For what? He called the apostles for what? What is the first point? To be with him. And then to send out. Now, you know, we have so many Protestant groups are also around us going house to house. Mighty miracles and healings are also taking place. Eh? So people have a confusion. Whom should I follow? <laughs> so, what is so special about the Catholic. Why should everyone should join into the Catholic Church? How come the Catholic Church is the original church? In up to 1,600 years, there was only one church. Now also there is only one church, but in, in between, some of the people started interpreting the teaching in their own way, in their own way, and made a division. And they began to start another organization. But we stick to, and so what is important now is to make the story short. This is where I began yesterday mentioning that point, but nobody shared about it and I did not also expand it. After Pentecost, what was the four points they were focusing? The four points that is in Acts of Apostles chapter 4, 42. They devoted themselves into the teaching of the apostles. Teaching of the apostles. And breaking of the bread, community life, and prayer. So we have the community life, we have the breaking of the bread, we have the prayer, but are we really have the apostolic teaching. This is where the Protestantism began. Everybody started interpreting their own way. So now when you did the when you did the exercises, when you did these workshops, one comment I received was, oh we don't we don't have enough faith. We are not sure whether the Lord will heal us. We are not sure. So why this faith? How the faith should increase? Our faith will increase not only by learning the Bible. Our faith will increase because the Lord has given a direction. We have to grow in that direction. So, we had the, in, Mar, in Matthew's Gospel, in Matthew's Gospel, the last words of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus said, go and proclaim all powers of heaven and earth is given to me. Go, 
therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit now the next point is teaching them they all all of us have received baptism but we need a teaching baptize them but that is not enough the next point is teaching them to observe observe what all that i have commanded you i who is this i so in the case of pharisees they focus on the teaching of moses but jesus said i am the teacher and in the church this teaching magisterium continues through the through the apostles and through the through the pope every pope and so through the bishops so bishops are the authority of the teaching magisterium united with the pope and we have to perpetuate we have to continue that teaching of the apostles so then only church will grow we have lot of institutions sorry to say see we have all institutions like every congregation congregation is growing as soon as the candidate comes you will give them the biography of the founder you will give them the charism of the congregation you will give them the constitution of the congregation we are focusing on the congregation congregation is growing is that is enough is that is enough but the catholic church has a constitution like you have a constitution for your your congregation catholic church has a constitution this catechism of catholic church is the name popularly known but its its real name is constitution apostolic constitution from apostolic constitution look here i will leave this book down here any of you i invite you to come and take this book and just go through this you will see how much i have worked with this book the way i have underlined so many things okay now more than 900 days i am teaching this catechism of course more than 30 years i am teaching this and then only i have found my faith must be rooted in the apostolic constitution so i have full confidence in what i am teaching so many people sometimes when i have some discussion a short group discussion they say look at me thomas you are speaking with confident how you got this confident yes because what i am teaching is the teaching of the church <laughs> so i have full confidence i am not teaching any teaching from my head i am not allowed to teach anything of mine so that is what even jesus said john chapter 7 16 people had made about jesus as teaching oh how come you learned all these things what a wisdom and jesus said my teaching is not mine even jesus is telling my teaching is from the one who sent me so we are sent we are sent with this instruction you must teach what i taught you 
Today, you know, I come mostly, I am working mostly in Germany. You might have heard so many news about Germany. You know it in the public media, I'm not speaking. I don't want to speak. But the problem is, there also, there is no catechism at all. There is no catechism at all. Neither in the parish, nor in the school. So, many are thinking they can have a synodal way and decide their own plan. That is not the way. So also, when a diocese when an official organization for evangelization, we must follow a magisterium's teaching, teaching of the magisterium. Now, in this paragraph 156 and 58 teaches us how our faith can grow. Our faith can grow. Paragraph 156. 156 says, faith and understanding. What moves us to believe is not the fact that revealed truths appear as true and intelligible in the light of a natural reason. That is, we believe because of the authority of God himself who reveals them. We believe because of the authority. There is a teaching authority. So that is the beauty of the Catholic Church. In the Catholic Church, there is a teaching authority. The greatest, uh, in my <laughs> joyful feeling, when I have followed a lot of teaching of the church, the greatest event happened in the church was the Second Vatican Council. More than or around 5,000 bishops and theologians and the senior leaders together with Pope is praying, O oh Lord, give us a new Pentecost. Followed by so much vibrant teaching scheme. And Pope Francis often said, We are having, we are going to have a, we are going to have a uh, jubilee. There are two ways of a jubilee. One is 25 years, 2025. So 25 is a jubilee year. More than that, this 25 is also a jubilee of Second Vatican Council after 60 years after the Council. And Pope Francis says, at least even after 60 years of the Council, our people, our priests and our believers should read and reflect the teaching of the Vatican Council, at least the four dogmatic constitutions. In the Council, there are 16 decrees, 16 documents. Out of the 16 documents, the first four most important documents are dogmatic constitution, Lumen Gentium, Diverbum, Sacrosanctum Concilium, Gaudium Specs, Lumen Gentium, about the church, Sacrosanctum Concilium, about the liturgy, Diverbum, about the word of God, and Gaudium Specs, that is about the church in the modern world. He says this is dogmatic constitution. What is mean by dogmatic constitution? Dogmatic constitution means every believer must obey this 
and follow this teaching dogma now tell me how many of you are reading this now in the congregations do you have any of this document in the congregation do you read these documents do you learn these documents i have seen such a powerful feeling when i read <laughs> it is not reading when i study this teaching when i study this teaching and nowadays it is very easy you can you can you can simply google oh sorry google google lumen gentium paragraph 1 tak tak and it comes it is so available and we have after every pope now pope john 23 he is one of the beautiful teaching of john 23 is church is the mother and teacher mater mater magistra mater magistra church is mother and teacher church is a mother and teacher wonderful encyclical pope paul the 6th on evangelization for francis was referring this just couple of months back even now the evangelii nunciandi the papal teaching of pope john paul the 6th is so strongly even now it is like today's today's teaching even after so more than 50 years of this apostolic teaching it is like a handbook for evangelization and pope francis says every catholic should learn this read it and reread it and pope john paul ii one very essential teaching all of us should learn is evangel evangelii nunciandi redemptoris missio the mission of the redeemer the first chapter of the redemptoris missio speak about jesus savior of the world second chapter is about the kingdom of god third chapter is Holy Spirit is the principal worker of evangelization. John Paul II has written 14 encyclicals and so many apostolic exhortations. At least one of that you must read. And then after John Paul II came Pope Benedict XVI, his first encyclical was Deus Caritas. There was carried out is God is love. You must read that. Oh, what a, what a powerful and loving teaching. God is love. And Pope Francis came. His encyclical. First of all, he wrote a apostolic letter, the joy of the gospel. evangelii gaudium evangelii gaudium he says every one must experience the joy which the lord is giving in evangelizing so he wrote this apostolic letter as the very first introduction that in the modern world we need a modern and very stronger way for evangelization so i want to give certain new teaching how you can evangelize with what idea so evangelii gaudium and there are several other teaching like like for young people you must read pope francis's christus vivit christus vivit about the youth how we have to 
train our youth and form our youth and and gaudete exultate gaudete exultate rejoice and be glad that is another beautiful teaching where uh, so many very important aspect of christian life is mentioned in that the third chapter of gaudete exultate is dedicated about the beatitudes he says beatitudes are like a identity card of a christian every christian should know the beatitude and that is the new law the old testament the 10 commandments is important but in new testament jesus gave almost like the 10 commandments the beatitude beatitude so that is why jesus says you must teach what i commanded you so for a very systematic and good evangelization if you want the catholics or the believers should stick to the church and love for the church is to develop a love for the church love for the church church is the body of christ but when we love the church then only the anointing happens this is a very famous teaching of saint agustin saint agustin's teaching is holy spirit comes to us but that is not enough holy spirit work in us so powerfully when you love the church holy spirit was sent on the pentecost not just some people who gathered there but upon the church saint agustin says church is the body of christ jesus is the head of the church we are the body of the church now how this body and head works what is the soul who is the soul can somebody say holy spirit so this understanding we need we are the body of the church jesus is the head of the church holy spirit is the soul of the church and when we have the love for the church everything change everything change our ministry become a part of the church we are not doing our own ministry oh i want to do this ministry like an independent private party or private proprietorship no our ministry is the ministry of the church we belong to the church so only when we relate the teachings now you have seen me i am quoting the scripture but also catechism but also papal teachings but also my own experience so this is a four ways you must train yourself only bible is not enough so that is what happened in protestant they say sola scriptura scripture is enough but jesus was speaking to the emmaus disciples the bible throughout the journey but finally when he took the bread and gave thanks and praise and broke it and gave to them now their eyes opened only by bible is not the way of teaching bible and the tradition of the church the teaching of the church so bible in this form came at the end of 4th century even the gospels are written maybe at the year 60 ad 65 75 90 so up to the 
up to 60 AD how the church was growing after pentecost so many years how the church was growing through the teaching of the church so teaching of the church when you start learning then you will find the you will find the heroes of the early church the heroes of the early church the fathers of the church fathers of the church means the first seven and even eight century great saints like saint ephraim saint jerome saint john chrysostom saint saint agustin saint ambrose saint saint Cyprian Saint Cassian Saint 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 John Damascene Saint Gregory of Nyssa Saint Gregory of Nazianzen Saint Polycarp Saint Justin Martyr Polycarp when he was burnt alive people felt very good fragrance of baking the bread baking the bread ignatius of antioch ignatius of antioch was thrown into the colosseum colosseum to be eaten by the animals he knew then on the way he wrote a letter i am going to be chewed chewed in the mouth of the animals like the wheat is wheat is grinded to make the bread for the eucharist in the next days i will be chewed in the mouth of the lions and that will be my way of the offering to the lord he gracious of antio you must read some of his teachings the church history the first three centuries of the history is completely through the blood of the martyrs and so much suffering they have gone they have gone through and also so much so much they had to fight for the faith fight for the faith so tertullian jorgen bead and then uh, saint athanasius saint athanasius there was a priest called arianus arianus uh, made such a such a such a heresy that he made a particular teaching through which he proved or he wanted to perpetuate that jesus's divinity what is that it is all in the catechism yeah so arianus yes arius arius in in the ecumenical council the first ecumenical council of nysa in 325 that is the first council because of this heresy confessed its creed that the son of god is begotten not made consubstantial with the father and condemned arius who had affirmed that the son of god came to be from a thing that were not and that he was from another substance church was divided in terms of this teaching then constantine has called a council of all the bishops and teachers and in that council against the argument of arius who is a priest of 75 years old he wanted to argue that christ is from another substance not from the father 
against this a 25 year old uh, Athanasius Athanasius came there as a secretary to the to the cardinal of Constantinople but when he heard this argument he was he was motivated by Holy Spirit he was only a deacon he stood up and started speaking and all the fathers were amazed how this Athanasius is defining the doctrine of the church and so Arius was condemned and that was the first ecumenical council of Cons Constantinople council if we read the church history, <laughs> I tell you, we will feel such proud and love for the church. One side, so much big, big people's martyrdom. Another side, so much great personalities who fought for the faith. Fought for the faith. Another side, persons like Saint Jerome, Saint Jerome had to, Saint Jerome was asked to make a translation of the Bible from Greek to Latin. But then when he went to Jerusalem and he stayed in Jerusalem, he learned Hebrew. Then he understood when the translators translated originally from Hebrew to Greek, already there are some points missed. So he wanted to learn Hebrew and he translated the Bible from Hebrew to Latin. 28 years he lived in that, like in a cave, studied the scripture, went to every spot where Jesus lived, Jesus spoke and he went into the uh, vernaculars of the people and understood the meaning so much they worked behind the translation Saint Jerome the Bible what we have now in our hand before we receive it so many great saints have worked behind it to make it available for us so also, the church fathers are the one whose interpretation, whose interpretation is not one person's interpretation. This is called, in another way, consensus of the fathers. Consensus of the fathers means on one interpretation, at least four of the church fathers should agree. That is called consensus. So that is how the church has a teaching which has followed from the interpretation of the fathers of the church. So in that fathers of the church, Saint Augustine, oh, what a, what a, what a great teaching. Saint Augustine, Saint Ambrose. Saint Ambrose was the bishop of Milan. In Milan, the bishop retired and a new bishop was to be chosen. So there were two groups of people who were fighting for the post of the bishop. So there was a little commotion and argument happening. So uh, Ambrose was the governor of Milan. So he came there to make the situation peaceful. While Ambrose came there to control the situation, came out the, the problems because of the arguments of two fractions. Then at that time, a child started saying, Ambrose Bishop, Ambrose Bishop. And slowly, this voice spread it into everyone, Ambrose Bishop, Ambrose Bishop. Then everybody thought, why not? And everybody voted for it, and he became Bishop, Ambrose became Bishop. He was, not, he was not yet baptized at that time. And Ambrose ran away. <laughs> he was afraid to get into the post of a bishop. He went in hiding place. But this organization 
went to the emperor and said, you have to declare Ambrose to come out of the hiding place and take up. It is now, he is the bishop. And finally, emperor sent the decree, Ambrose is the bishop, you have to come and you have to follow the rules of the Catholic Church. So then he received baptism, he received confirmation, he became a priest, he became a bishop, imagine. And he became such a great teacher, such a great church father. And when we learned their lifestyle, how much they were immersed in the scripture. Saint Augustine is the one who, who when we read some of his teaching, one of the most fascinated teaching of Saint Augustine is his autobiography called My Confession. That is a very easy reading. But more stronger is his another work called City of God. And yet much more than is his interpretation of all the Psalms. He is the one who interpreted all the 150 Psalms. And I tell you, all these teachings are used in the catechism. In the catechism, behind the catechism, you have an index of the more latest copy. It is also there that all these church fathers' teachings where it is referred to. And when we read their interpretations, we, we feel such an admiration. As an example, now in 292, St. Irenaeus. St. Irenaeus says, Father, the Holy Spirit and Jesus is like two hands of the Father. The Creator Father created everything with his two hands. What are the two hands? Two hands. See, here. So, The Father God, the Creator, the Author, the Giver of Order, He made all things by Himself. That is, by the Word and by His wisdom. By the Son and the Spirit, who, so to speak, are His hands. So, only that much, His hands, quote, Saint Irenaeus. So, in the catechism, you will find such teachings come from so many early church fathers' teaching. And that teachings came to the doctrine. That is the doctrine the church is following. The church has a doctrine, the church has a dogma. Now, in catechism 254, as an example, 254, we are, we are speaking so much about the Holy Trinity. Look here, 254. The divine persons are really distinct, distinct from one another. God is one, but not solitary. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are not simply names designating modalities of the divine being for they are really distinct from one another. Very interesting. Now, this is a dogma. He is not the father who is the son. Correct. He is not the father who is the son, nor is the son he who is the father, nor is the Holy Spirit who is the father or son. So these three persons are distinct, very easy to understand, Father and the Son. They are different, but they are one. Father is not the Son, Son is not the Father, Father and Son is not the Holy Spirit, but they are one. So that is the dogma of the Trinity. So they are distinct from one another in their relation of origin, relation. Father and Son, there is a relation by the name itself. Father, 
and son. So son is begotten from the father. So it is the father who generates the son who is begotten and the Holy Spirit who proceeds. The divine unity is triune. So I tell you as a layman I thank God that the Lord has guided me into the papal teaching. The first encycl encyclical I read was Dominum et Vivificandum on Holy Spirit. And then only I realized the, for evangelization I must also learn Evangelist Nunciandi and Pope, ben, Pope John Paul II's Redemptoris Missio. And that gave me such a confidence, such a way to proclaim. So, we are not to preach something which is formed in our head. Church already has prepared everything. <laughs> now, I tell you a simple way. Suppose you have a homily or a small sermon you have to make. You have the gospel. Okay. Now, in that gospel, you go to this behind the uh, book, behind this, every gospel passage has a reference how it is related to catechism. And take that one paragraph. In that paragraph, you have several references from which church father it is written or which dogmatic teaching it is written. So you have the Bible interpretation based on the teaching of the church. And then you can relate it with the liturgy, little bit, liturgy. Because when we have, when we relate it with the liturgy, then it is like a Ignatius. <laughs> it is igniting. The word Ignatius comes from igniting. It ignites. It is like a fire. Okay, I think this is enough now. So, through this I want you sincerely I have I am enjoying this way of a way of a method of teaching using catechism and Bible and the papal teaching. I have the papal teaching here. I have the papal teachings here. And so these three things how to mingle must be the artwork you should do. So when you read some of this, you will get idea, you make a note of that. So God, the Lord will utilize you to use that way. Okay. So this is how our faith grows and our power grows and our confidence grows. Our confidence grows. And these days, we have such a facility in the YouTube in YouTube, there is a channel of Vatican, Vatican News English. There is also Vatican News Hindi. There is all language Vatican News, but in English, so you can get current what today Pope is teaching. Every Wednesday, there is a general audience catechesis by Holy Father. Every Wednesday. It is given to the believers. So you have a you, you can listen to that, it's only 10 minutes, but in that 10 minutes, what Holy Spirit is giving to the church, the Holy Father is speaking. And when you have a habit of going every time through the papal teachings, you, are, you will learn another art, another art of being with the church, a love for the church and dedication to the church. Then only the Lord can use us powerfully. Yes. Now let us thank God and praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Everybody, I pray for you. Oh, Holy Spirit, help us to grow with the love of the church. Help us to grow in the love of the church. Help us to grow in the papal teaching of the church. Help us to grow with all the teaching magisterium of the church. Oh, Holy Spirit, I believe church is mother and my teacher. Church is my mother and my teacher. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
is it too hard or do you feel more love for the church teaching now what do you feel or oh so this is another thing now somebody is thinking now oh why should i learn all these things did did moses learn this did abraham learn this these are the counter arguments comes i think some of the priests are thinking this is another problem when we have the gift of holy spirit <laughs> what you think reflect in me so somebody is thinking what is the use of all this teaching did did uh, abraham learned all the teaching we have no answer so answer i tell you sorry one more minute we when we talk about faith we immediately go to hebrews chapter 11 faith of abraham onwards but what is written at the end of hebrew chapter 11 hebrew chapter 11 and says although they had this faith yet all this though approved because of their faith did not receive what had been promised abraham did not receive what has been promised <laughs> God has foreseen something better for us what is that that is written in hebrews chapter 12 2 so hebrews chapter 12 2 says while keeping our eyes fixed on jesus our eyes must be fixed on jesus the leader and perfecter of faith for the sake of the joy that lay before him he endured the cross despising its shame and he has taken his seat at the right of the throne of god the pharisees focus moses and abraham that is not the final yes they are the beginners but who is the final who is the perfecter of faith whom should we focus abraham or moses or Say louder. Whom should we focus? Say louder. Jesus. Come on, everybody. Jesus. Oh, no, dumb. Jor laga ke. Jesus. That is it. We think Abraham's faith is the final. No. So that is written here, twelve two. while keeping our eyes fixed on jesus the leader and perfecter of our faith so i can do it here now let us go for lunch and after lunch you have our prayer session and then we will continue the session thank you